to the 2020 matriculation lectures. It's part of the ceremonies marking the second matriculation ceremony of Roll Up Computer Academy Warren. You are all welcome. So quickly we'll be taking the opening prayers. Let's stand up and pray. In Jesus' name. Eternal Father, we thank you for the gift of life. For part of your life that you have imparted with us, we say thank you. You've been with us from morning till this time. You have preserved us. We are grateful for it. We are back in of ceremonies leading to the second mat matriculation ceremony of Roll of Computer Academy. It's by your grace we have arrived so far. And we are grateful in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, O oh Lord God, that it will be a success. And as many that are yet to be here, especially the students, you will bring them here. And they will see the need for this meeting in the name of Jesus Christ. As we begin to receive lecture, we ask, O oh Lord, that we will learn something new that will be beneficial to us. And at the end of the day, your name alone be glorified. For we are prayed in Jesus' name. Okay, before we proceed, let me make a formal introduction of the members of the high table. Okay, we don't have any stranger in our midst. Please, let's occupy this seat because of the coverage. So that... Very quickly, we want to appreciate the presence of the Chairman Board of Directors, Rule of Computer Academy Worry, Mr. Lucky of Wafu. Let's put our hands together for him. Thank you so much, sir, for this. Um, thank you so much for this privilege, for the opportunity to learn, for putting this together. And right beside him is the Rector, Rule of Computer Academy Worry, Mrs. Josephine Yoreme of Wafo. Let's put our hands together for her. You're welcome, ma. We have the registrar, Role of Computer Academy Worry, the acting registrar, Role of Computer Academy Worry, Miss Blossom Oyem. Let's put our hands together for her. You're welcome, ma. Okay, we have the general manager, Role of Computers, Role of Computers, and the HOD, Computer Hardware Engineering Technology Department. Mrs. Nelly Aboede, let's put our hands together for her. You're welcome, ma. So I want to, on behalf of the, on behalf of Role of Computer Academy, where I want to welcome the members of the press and all the students, the NID1 and the NID students here present. Thank you so much for being here. And all the certificate students. Thank you so much for Wow. The acting general manager, Delta Broadcasting Service Worry, Pastor Malcolm Oteri just walked in. Let's give him a standing ovation. Give him a standing ovation. You're welcome, sir. Okay, please sit down. Okay, um, he was followed in here by Mr. Emeke Waiku. Let's put our hands together for him. All right. 
I very quickly were going straight to the lecture on personal hygiene. So we know what's happening in this season, right? What's the most trending news right now? Coronavirus, right? Yes, it's shaking the whole world. It's shaking the entire world. So it becomes very, very important that we learn some things about keeping ourselves healthy, keeping ourselves clean. So very quickly, without wasting much time, we're going to be looking at personal hygiene. What is personal hygiene? Simply put, personal hygiene means washing all the essential parts of the body, keeping all the essential parts of the body clean. That is why it's called personal. It has to do with your hair, your face and skin, your, your teeth, your ears, your hands, your feet, every part of your body, your nails. Okay? Now, we're going to look at some basic parts, some basic aspects of personal hygiene. Personal hygiene includes bathing regularly. We are not kids here. You know, while we were in primary school, they would tell you to bathe three times a day, right? It's very, very important. And even these seasons that we are, immediately, it's advisable that immediately you even leave, you, you, you come out and you go back to your house. You have, you, have to, you have to wash. You have to even bait because you must have come in contact with a lot of things. Okay? It also has to do with taking care of your hands and nails because um, James finds it very easy to hide inside our nails, especially dirty nails. Your nails might not even look dirty, but they might contain gems. So it becomes very, very important that we come and do more justice on that. It also involves ear care, hair care, feet care, clothing, everything that has to do with a person. Okay? What is poor personal hygiene? Poor personal hygiene is a failure to keep up with the standard of hygiene. And poor personal hygiene can have so many implications. Number one is the risk of getting an infection or illness. Because when you don't take care of your hands, when you don't take care of your nails, when you don't take care of your clothes, you carry a lot, a mil millions of gems around. And by the time you eat, not everything you, you, you eat that is washed. You buy snacks, you eat with your hands. You buy biscuits, you eat with your hands. You are infecting yourself unknowingly. Then you can cause social embarrassment, like body odor is caused by gems. Mouth odor is caused by accumulation of gems. Okay? If you stay clean, you will attract friends and not flies. So if you are attracting flies, you should check yourself. Baiting regularly, it is very, very important to bait regularly. You know this season, the weather has been very, very hot. I was complaining to a friend who is outside Nigeria that the weather is extremely hot. Like, you have to bait regularly. And it was like, when you bait like three times, four times, do you use soap? So is it important that once you have had your bath, maybe you had your bath when you got home from school, and you want to sleep, you are very hot. Is it important for you to use soap again after you have had your bath? Eh? So as many times as you bait, you should use soap. Should you? Yes. It is very, very important because our skins contain oil. Do you understand? And this oil, it, they get, it gets stuck to our skin. And if you do not use soap, you cannot, your skin will not be clean. So it's very, very important that no matter how many times, even though you're not going to use sponge, you should use soap to wash up. Okay? And water is one thing that God has blessed us with. We should use it very well. We should utilize clean water to keep clean. And it helps to prevent a lot of things. Now, this spread of coronavirus, one of the, um, one of the agents, of the one part of our body that helps to spread this virus very well is our hands. When you sneeze into your hands, when you cough into your hands, you do a lot of things with your hands. And it is with these hands you shake people, you touch things. So it is very, very important in this season that we keep our hands very clean. Like before you entered the hall, now you were, you were meant to, you, you were made to sanitize your hands. 
to use sanitizer. So, like I said, Daddy will deal more on that. Hand hygiene. Wet your hands and apply liquid. When you wash your hands, you can see that in all our restrooms, we have soaps. We have liquid soap. So, when you, maybe after using the uh, restroom or you go there to wash your hands, please don't just wash your hand like that and leave. Use soap. Because you will see that your palm is not dirty. When you wash it without water, you see that no dirt will come out. But when you apply soap, you will see that dirt will come out. It is very, very important that you well, don't just wash one hand. Use your two hands and scrub very well. Then rinse. And there's one thing we do. We wash our hands. If you wash your hand and you use a dirty napkin, do you know that you have gotten your hands dirty? So it is very, very important, too, that the napkins, the handkerchief that we use in cleaning our hands after washing should be clean. Because there could be germs in those handkerchiefs and napkins. And if you use them to wash your clean hands, you will get your hands dirty. Okay, we have looked at this. How to wash your hands, wet your hands, apply solution like your soap or your hand scrub. Scrub it back and forth. It's very important that you wash your, use your two hands while washing. Then you rinse. Now, if you use the restroom and you wash your hands, they say you see the toilet flush and that tap. They say it contains a lot of germs. The toilet flush and the tap in the in the restroom contains a lot of germs because it is someone who has just used the restroom that uses. So it is important that you flush first before you use the tap. And when you use the tap, don't use the hand that, when you own the tap, don't use the hand that you just washed to turn it off. Use your elbow to turn it off. So you don't end up contacting, because that handle has gems. So the hand you just washed, if you use your right hand to turn the tap off, you have contacted gems again. So it is very advisable that you turn it off with your elbow, so you don't contaminate your hands. Then, dry your hands with a napkin or a paper towel and ensure it is clean. Make hygiene part of your daily routine. Thank you very much. Right. Very quickly, we have guests in our midst. And they have left a lot of things to be with us today. And we really appreciate your pre their presence. Thank you so much, sir, for coming. We appreciate your presence. So we are going to move on very fast. So we are going to be looking at something that is very, very important today. Cybercrime and cybersecurity. Pay attention. Some of you, you've heard of... Facebook accounts being hacked, bank accounts being hacked, right? Those are cyber crime. So we have somebody in the house that's going to take us through this and tell us ways by which we can protect ourselves from being victims of cyber crime. Let's put our hands together as I make welcome Mrs. Nelly Aboede to take us through this. Clap for her. Good afternoon, everybody. All right. Why we are waiting for the assistant to come on? We are here. We are here this afternoon to give you enlightenment on coronavirus and the lecture on cyber crime and cyber security. So we are going to move very fast because the people, that, the guests that we have around, uh, their time is also very, very tight. So we will move very fast. I will take the one on. 
you got to boost your immunity. This period, especially now that we have coronavirus, if you have low immunity, you are most susceptible to to not even to withstand the shock or the attack from the coronavirus. So there's a need for all of us to stay very healthy and strong this period so that your immunity will be very, very strong to be able to fight any disease at all, especially coronavirus. So I will take you through this section on how to boost your immunity so that you can withstand everything that has to do with your coronavirus. Normally, your immune system consists, consists of about four different areas of your, or more. You have your organs, the cells, the tissues, and the proteins. And together, all these ones have what we call, uh, we fight over what we call pathogens that carry diseases and virus. So these pathogens are the things that the, that the body carry, so that you would, I mean, these are, the immune system is what the body carries to be able to fight pathogens or whatever you call the disease. So on its own, the body is created in such a way that it can fight any disease. It's only when it finds it difficult to be able to withstand any disease or infection that you have to support it with your drugs. But on its own, it can withstand any infection, especially those of you that are still very young. So this is what the immune system is all about, but I, I won't take you through this question because it is a little bit uh, long. So we go straight to to how to build and maintain your immune system. Uh, this is a very, it's a very dangerous exercise. The children, God has a way of protecting them, so they can do so many things and, and survive. But we don't expect adults to be kissing swines and uh, pigs. So what the immune system actually fights are things like uh, infections, cancer, cold, flu, allergies, and most especially now that we have uh, coronavirus. So if you have a very weak immune system, if you're not able to withstand emotional stress, and uh, you're subjected to exposure to toxins, and so you have to build them up by taking so many things. So we have, there are a lot of things we need to avoid this period have to do things that will make it boost in your immune system. Poor diets have to do with uh, processed foods, sugary drinks, lack of fruit and vegetables. For this season, it is very important as possible to reduce anything that has to do with sugar. Uh, lack of rest. If you don't rest at all, or you don't sleep at all, it's also a contributing factor to making your immune system. Uh, if you take a lot of alcohol, if you are somebody that drink, this period you avoid taking alcohol so that you, your immune system can can fight uh, any uh, coronavirus. I would not like to go through uh, sugar, the dangers of sugar, because it's it's it's, it's not uh, it will take a lot of time. So, but avoid anything that has to do with sh sugar drinks. This one still has to do with uh, dangers of sugar. But things like white flour, things that you made from white flour, that's bread, baked goods, uh, chips, crackers, snacks, all these things cause your immune system to go down. And especially if you, you have a blood sugar level or surges, you should check yourself at this period. So they white flour, it, they will bring down your immune system. Uh, okay, two causes of cells that are functioning. We have the exposure to toxins and lack of nutrients. All these ones also contribute to weakening your immune system. So uh, things that you create toxins in your body, you should be able to evacuate your any buildup of toxins in your body, either through toilet where you go to pass the rain, when you go to toilet in the morning to wear a poo when you sweat. And so many other things. Those things uh, have to be evacuated. So you know how to keep your immune system naturally. I've told you that you must eat. Have, first of all, have adequate rest of about eight to ten hours sleep a day. But this is for kids anyway. We recommend six to six to eight hours. But for students, this period you need to read a lot. So but need to create time for you to rest. Exercise regularly. Reduce toxins. As I told you avoid sugar. 
diet rich, take diet rich in vegetables, fruits, legumes, whole grains, and fatty food. Avoid, take a lot of water this period and just like rehydrate yourself, especially now that it is hot. Then if there's a need for you to take any nutritional supplement, you will get the advice of your doctor because there are so many things to talk about. Nutritional supplement that has to do with vitamin A, vitamin D, zinc, and so many other things that people claim can fight uh, coronavirus. Thank you. So I go straight to the lecture on coronavirus before we take the as, as this afternoon when I checked my report on John Hopkins University site, they have over 201,000 infections and so many people have died. What the record I'm going to show you has to do with yesterday's statistics. So first of all, coronavirus is nicknamed or is uh, given a, a name called COVID-19 by the World Health Organization. I will explain to you what is COVID-19 is. So it is a repressive disease that spread from person to person. The cause started with infections in a, a region called Wahoo in China as of around December and the COVID-19 CO stands for Corona VI stands for virus, then D stands for disease. So 19 stands for the year 2019. That's the explanation for or the acronym for World Health Organization. So the, it has been described as pandemic or pandemic by the World Health Organization because of the spreads and because of the fact that it also kills very fast. And so right now, almost every country has recorded at least one case. <laughs> so, so many people have been saying that it came from eating animals and so on, but that, that we're not going into all those details. But what you should know is that you should meet him some uh, some kind of uh, precautions which are going to take you through our bodies. But it's, it is contacted through surface. Uh, there's objects that, that you, have, you have touched and use the hand that you have touched to touch your eyes, your nose, your face. So once your hands are touched anything where it is suspicious or whatever it is, you don't need to be suspicious. Once your hands are touched any surface or touch somebody, you have to do something to disinfect it. So these are the stages it which it goes through how it spreads in the body. But I will take you to some of the symptoms. So the high risk group are people that are 60 years and, and above. As the age increases, the higher the risk. The oldest people in the world are living in Japan, are followed by, uh, sorry, Japan, yes, followed by Italy. And so you find that the death rate in those countries, actually, especially Italy, is, is high. Uh, the highest is, is China, followed by Italy. But the older you are, the more likely to be, the, high, the higher the risk of, of the infection. Not only the higher the risk of infection, the, high, the survival rate is also very, very low. Uh, so, for you that are still young, you can withstand it. But please, everybody has to be cautious. Even though you will not die, or God will not allow you to die, don't allow those who are already old to go to the grave. So you have to protect them by taking all the precautions that are being taken. So with the next one are people that have disease conditions, that have to heart, diabetes, and lung diseases. Those ones are very high risk. Uh, children and pregnant women should also be be cautious. The symptoms as reported uh, follow three critical ones are fever. That's why we are demonstrating non-contact temperature. Uh, these things we have, we, as we are coming, we took your temperature with a non-contact uh, thermometer. Uh, that is one. Then two. It was your temperature is 38 degrees or above. You, have, you is, there's every suspicion that you have fever. Temperature should be below 38 degrees for a normal person. Even once it's 38 and above, 
you should go and check yourself. It is America that they use the degrees Fahrenheit, but Nigeria will use degrees centigrade. If you are coughing or have shortness of breath, sneezing, running nose, fatigue, and so on and so forth, those are serious symptoms. But they are also called emergency warning signals. These emergency warning signals have to do with difficulty in breathing or shortness of breath. Once you experience that, you should please take immediate action. Call your doctor. Persistent pain or pressure in the chest, new confusion or inability to arouse them, bleep, blush lips or face. Once you have any of these conditions, you should. Because once you contact coronavirus, it, it will show within two to uh, 14 days. Two to 14 days. So you must take action very fast. Okay, sorry, I went backwards. So, as at yesterday when I went to the internet, we have 162 uh, countries have been affected with reported cases of 184. But at this afternoon when I checked around uh, 1 o'clock or so, we have over 201 infected uh, cases. And with the death rate is higher than this figure that we have here now. So, Nigeria, okay, the highest is China with uh, 80 deaths, 80,000 infections and 3,000 deaths. Italy, 2,100 deaths. Iran, Iran is even is very big trouble now because they don't have, they are not, they don't even know what to do because they have sanctions all over the country. Nigeria, as at this afternoon, have eight infections. Eight, five new cases. One case was reported yesterday. as at this afternoon, eight. So, and the, once the numbers are rising, it becomes a problem. So, the government may take some actions very, very fast. So, this is an opportunity for you to know what to do. You don't have to wait for somebody to tell you what to do first. So, this is the job. Hawking University. They, if you go to their site, you can get the correct figure. Every minute, it is always changing. This is a counter. It changes, as you, as you are saying it there. So how do you, what do you do to avoid risk of infection? So have, that's why you should demonstrate washing of hands. Then if you are moving, please move with tissue paper. Because if you are going to be using your, your napkin or, or whatever, uh, handkerchief, it means that you are either going to be spreading it very fast or you contaminate it and you quit in the place that somebody will get it. But if you use tissue paper, you can always dispose it, but don't dispose it in the place where breeze will carry it. Uh, avoid contact with anyone who had cold or flu-like symptoms. They seek medical advice early. So how to protect yourself? Every t we are, there are so many ways of protecting yourself, but please, I will go through them very fast. Number one thing is prevention. You can do is to prevent any crisis is to practice good personal hygiene. That's the key thing. And that is what uh, faith took us through. Then, first of all, you wash your hands. You have she has demonstrated that if you don't have a place where there's water for you to wash your hands, it was so embarrassing when I read in the paper that whether, whether your state has some assembly or so, they don't even have wash hand basins to, for people to wash their hands. But where there's no water, please use alcohol-based sanitizers. Sanitizer from what we have seen since yes, two days ago, we went to look. they are even very scarce. Apart from being scarce, they are not even available, and the prices have gone up. Like the small ones that you brought now, that's about a thousand naira now, and they are not even available. So what you can do is that use alcohol that is minimum of 60% alcohol content. From 60% to 95% alcohol content, content we do it. Spirits will not remove this virus. Don't use spirits at all. So try as much as possible to ensure alcohol. Ogogoro is cheap, now, isn't it? Uh -huh. So you can use Ogogoro. <laughs> Avoid shaking hands as a greeting. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with or wash hands. Then cover your mouth or sneeze with a tissue like I've told you. If you get mucus or spit on your skin, clean it off right away. All right.
you can see we, this is what we cannot avoid in Nigeria, this uh, counting of notes. Some people, when they want to even count notes, they have to use their hands to touch their tongue first before they, before they count. So you must clean so many things like door handles, your mobile phones, even steering's, and so many things, that, things that you know that probably everybody is using. You must try as much as possible to disinfect if you are going to use them at all. You have to take precautions. So avoid crowds and think your daily activities and practice what is called social distancing strategies. In some countries, they say you should stay six feet apart. If you want to greet somebody, use your elbow and so on and so forth. So there are so many strategies, but try as much as possible to avoid uh, people, especially shaking your hands at this time. It's not... It, it's not uh, something that we should play with. Uh, regularly and totally clean surfaces or objects frequently touched, such as countertops, door knobs with a disinfectant. Disinfectant, that I told you, is alcohol based. Stay at home when you are sick. If you are experiencing runny nose or your temperature is high, please tell us that this is the situation. We'll allow you to stay at home. Don't need to come. <laughs> but that is the truth. Should I wear a medical mask? Uh, mask is actually, oh sorry. The medical mask is not really a protection. Listen, it's only when you have virus already, or you suspect that you have, you have virus, you can use it. In America, it is, they don't think it is something that is necessary. It is, but if you already have the disease or symptoms of that thing, wear it so that you do not spread it. Vaccine. America has just discovered the vaccine. They are testing it now. So, uh, there's not, it's not available to anybody to use, apart from those people that are testing it on U in U.S. now. Is there any treatment for now? No. No. Criminal activities. People are already going around claiming that they can come and disinfect your house. And some will tell you, I offer you free sanitizers and face masks and respirators. Please, they are sedated. Don't accept them. Don't accept such gift from unknown people. Otherwise, you will be, you will be either kidnapped or be used for ritual purposes or whatever it is. So be very careful. Now, we should ensure that we practice good hygiene and do everything, especially when there are instructions for the government. We should follow the instructions from either the head officers, the government, or either from the state or the federal level. But the federal level have what is called Nigeria Center for Disease Control. That is the one that is actually uh, handling such uh, infectious disease in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you, sir. Okay, um, do we have questions? Can I take two questions? Does anyone have questions? Do you ha is there any parts that you are not clear with that you need more clarification on? It's all clear, right? Now, I want to ask a question concerning using tissue and handkerchiefs. If you have a flu and you have to sneeze, if you have a flu and you have to, and you have to sneeze, if it just, you don't know if it's just normal flu or because I'm very certain it has not got into this part yet. Is it safe if you use your handkerchief and wash it and reuse it? Or should we just use handkerchiefs now and discard them if you have a flu? Well, when you have a handkerchief, you can't throw it away now. But make sure that you don't allow another person to touch it. Or don't go and use that hand that I've used in, because the hand is already contaminated to be shaking people or touching things that other people are touching. So it's, it is, you have to ensure that you don't spread it. Minimize the spread. Okay, I want to ask another question. I will answer the two questions. Now, talking about alcohol, does drinking the alcohol help an infected person or does it help to 
um, prevent the spread of the virus? I mentioned alcohol when I was talking about immunity. Avoid drinking alcohol this period so that immunity will not be compromised. But use the alcohol on, as a sanitizer, that is for your hands, to kill the germs or the virus when, as, a, as a means of prevention. Thank you, sir. Sorry, sir. I need clarification on that. The alcohol. What kind of alcohol? Is it your gogoro or beer or stout? Which, what kind of alcohol? Alcohol, I said the alcohol content should be sixty percent and above. Beer has alcohol content of four percent. Wine and all those ones, the alcohol percent is maybe less than ten percent or so. So ogogoro or gin. Gin. Those are the ones that I recommend. And those are the ones that some people are using outside the country because it is cheap and it's easily available. <laughs> so don't go and drink alcohol and say daddy said we should use alcohol I know why I asked that question okay so now very quickly okay at a time like this is this advisable to be attending parties no the precaution is that you should practice non-contact avoid that as much as possible when, you're, when I say this, don't shake people's hands. Don't mingle with people like that. It is to protect yourself and also protect others. Because I was, we were watching the church program yesterday when one of the pastors from Nigeria was preaching in UK and he asked people they should hold their hands. They told him no. He said, why? He said, coronavirus. Okay, raise your your hands. <laughs> so you don't, because it is something that is dead. dead, dead. It's more than bomb. It's more than any other thing. Because there are some that you can end up and you'll be treated. But this one, you don't know how long you're going to stay. So anything that kills is creating fear. What we are, we're not trying to create fear. We're trying to give you enlightenment on how to stay alive. Not only staying alive, you can, you, when you're spreading, you're also happy to kill people, adults, people that are aged, people that are 60 years and above who want to still enjoy this life. But you young people, please don't spread it. If okay, thank you, sir. Okay, I want to say something. This morning, I was listening to radio. I was listening to Delta DBS 88.6. And a program was on, and the presenter said something about helping to check me this coronavirus. She said taking a lot of water helps. That, I don't know, I, I really didn't get it, that... Maybe guest, if you take it as, maybe you, it infects, you touch it in your hands. Maybe you, the virus is in your hands and you touch your food with it and you eat the food. That it gets stuck in your throat. That if you can take a lot of water, that the water can flush it. And once it gets in, into your system, it, it cannot affect you as much as when it's on the surface of your body. So she advised that taking a lot of fluids... Taking a lot of water regularly helps. You had a question. So it's advisable we take a lot of water. The question I have is, what of um, us that enter KK every day? How are we going to solve that issue? Because when we enter KK, we always, there's no how that your body, con your body will not come in contact with the other person. So how are we going to solve that issue? Yes. And another thing with opening doors, you know, touching things. Can we really avoid these things? How do we try to help ourselves? I've, already, I've told you that when you're moving around, try to move with sanitizer so that you cannot frequently be using the thing to rub your hands in case you contact the virus or germs. That is the best way you can reduce it. But if you say you want to avoid public transport, you cannot avoid it. So, but when you are in public transport, you should also try as much as possible. That if somebody has that kind of symptom and it's being shown, it's better you come down from the transport. Just tell the person that you want. <laughs> please, 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 please. Let me add the spiritual side of it. Fear. 
fear is the entrance for anything to come into your body. Once you are afraid of something, you have opened the door for the thing to come in. So have faith. When you wake up in the morning, commit your ways into God's hands. Watch your hands as much as possible. Know that you are not going alone. You have your ministry angels with you. You have the spirit of God with you. Be confident that this virus is not for you. God has not given us the spirit of fear. It's a spirit. He has given us a spirit of sound mind. Love. Boldness. So have that. Don't, don't even create it in your mind. Don't let it go to your brain. Because when you create it in your mind, you will be looking forward to it. Please don't look forward to a coronavirus. It's not for you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Ma. So quickly, we are going to move ahead to... But I would have really loved for our special guest to say some information that we don't have. Sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. Praise God. When uh, Faith was speaking about the presenter saying something this morning, I was just saying in my mind that now God will help us. Um, I am a media practitioner. I've been a veteran of the media now for getting close to three decades. But I'm first and foremost primarily called by God to be a pastor. And so when I counsel people, I tell them the truth as the Spirit of God and the Word of God guide me and not just because I am a media practitioner. How many of us here want to hear the truth? Do you want to hear the truth? Okay. If you want to hear the truth, let me advise you that in circumstances like this, the first place, the first thing you have to be wary of and be careful of is media information. This is because the fact that people have the microphone and have access to radio and television does not necessarily make them experts. Does not 